um, you know, there's one one story that I've um, uh, come to really see is very important, and that can teach us about um, how to uh, live in harmony uh, with our with creation, and, and we live with our uh, environment. Um, and that's the story of the Willocker Creek, and um, uh, where. Uh, uh, there, you know, the, when you approach Willocker Creek, it's a place just outside of Quorn and uh, on the way to Hawker. Um, and um, you know, you you approach uh, Willocker Creek and you can see it for miles in the distance. You can see these giant um, uh, out uh, lines of uh, river red gums standing in a line. Uh, and they were following the creek bed that once was there. The creek bed's no longer there. Uh, men, in their wisdom, uh, or in their foolishness, uh, thought it was best to move the creek. And so that's what they did. They dug out another man-made structure uh, next to where the creek line used to run. and. Um, it's this ugly, a very, very ugly scar on the face of uh, the earth now. And they built a bridge over it, uh, thinking that it was going to get flooded again, that they were going to, you know, that that's where the uh, creek would run. But that it doesn't run. The creek doesn't run that way naturally. Uh, a, a couple, about 500 yards down the road, that's where the creek has found its own way to run. And uh, so a little bit further down at a place called Bulkanda, um, which is another creek, uh, a new creek has formed. It's found its own way to run. And so, um, you know, the, uh, I love that saying, the river runs where it will. Uh, it'll make its own, own path. And, um, but for these old river red gums, you know, they stand there as a testament of, uh, you know, what happened there in that place. There's no more um, nice flowing creek that, um, you know, regularly feeds and waters them. So there, there is no more new growth on the trees or on the limbs. There's no new little plants that grow around uh, or down that creek, old outline of a creek bed now. Uh, but you know where the creek once was. You, you know where it once was. And, um, you know, there's, uh, I always uh, tell that little story because it's, you know, a story about, um, uh, for us, uh, the consequences of making a decision uh, you know, because when um, the the need to move the creek was because there was a, a pub there and the pub uh, cellar, which contained all the food and wines uh, for this outback post, uh, were, um, were um, regularly flooded by the creek. So that's why they thought that they'd need to move the creek. Very foolish decision. Uh, because it just changed the the, uh, the flow of the creek and you know the the natural flow of it, the creek stopped the growth and that's why those big old trees now they just stand there and they've got a story to tell hopefully that uh, we will learn uh, from from it because of you know the disastrous consequences that it has uh, on um, on people and on, on, on creation itself. Uh, you know, they, they stand there telling us, you know, warning us, you know, don't do this again. Um, they teach us about, you know, how we should, how we sh should um, 
respect uh, all other parts of creation. Uh, because, um, and, um, you know, when our voice, when people stop listening, you know, um, to us, uh, you know, First Nations peoples, when people stop listening to the First Nation voice, uh, creation's voice will still be speaking. And, and um, I've, I guess for me, uh, and I write in my book, uh, that the oldest voice in this land is creation. That um, that's God's oldest voice in this land is creation. And um, we need to hear, you know, hear what uh, Mother Nature and what creation is t telling us. I mean.